So let me now pick up where I left off in the, the previous video, in that we have created this definition of three states that you, you can actually simulate and see that the transitions happen from one state to another. But to actually create an agent, what we do is we select this, and then we go ahead and add a folder. Now, the in Insight Maker, folders do double duty in that in typical SD models, they're folders. In, in agent-based models, they are an agent. So that we go over here and we tell it that the behavior is, in fact, an agent as opposed to being um, the way a typical folder is. And we'll call this a person. All right, so now we have, now we really have an agent the person being the agent, which has three states that they might exist in, healthy, infected, and recovered. Now, we need, typically we want to model a lot of people as opposed to just one person. So we need to create a population. So we will go ahead and add an agent population and we'll just call it population but then we have to go ahead and tell it a population of what. So we come over here and tell it that the agent base is person. That's what ties this agent to this population. Now don't worry about all of the other parameters in this uh, parameter panel. We'll get to those in time as we create other models. But what we have now is we have an agent population made up of people and there are a hundred of them so that if we now run this without changing anything else just adding this population or creating this person and making it a population if we run this now we now see the trans transition of those hundred individuals in the population where all of the people start out as being healthy and as they become infected, the number of healthy people declines, and then over time the infected people recover so that eventually all of the people are in the recovered state. Now this is, you know, there are a lot of additional variances or nuances that could be added to this model. At the moment, this is step one. We're creating something that, that actually works. Now, the percent of people that are infected depends on how many people are already infected. So let us go ahead and add to this. We're going to go ahead and add a variable and we're going to call it percent infected. And that's actually going to be based upon the population and we're going to cause the infection transition to be based upon the number of people that are infected. Now don't let this uh, formula stress you out because we'll get to all of this in time. So the percent infected, the formula for that, which is adding up, looking at all of those hundred people in the population finding which ones are infected so that there's a, a per developing a percent of the people that are infected and then the infection rate is now actually the percent infected as opposed to a fixed number and then we also want to tell it that we want it to recalculate each time step as it goes through this. So now when we run the model, nothing happens. The reason that nothing happens is because we know we haven't infected anybody to begin with because it's based upon the percent infected. And if there's nobody infected, there's nothing to sort of start the thing. So we need to change the initial state 
of the infected to say that one person is infected. And we'll get to the details of this, but it says um, I don't, the first person is actually infected and the definition for the next one is instead of faults it's all of all of the ones that weren't initially infected are actually not infected so you've taken one person and and said that they're infected and makes the transition so um oh sorry I put these in the wrong place. This doesn't go there. This one goes here. So that there's one one person that's infected and there's one person and everybody else is not infected. Um, hard to keep track sometimes. Okay. So now, if I run this, hopefully it starts out with one infected person and this, the transitions are distinctively different than they were previously because now it is taking into account the percentage of people that are already infected. So the infection rate declines based upon the number of people that have already been infected. And you can run this model over and over again. And as I said, it will produce different curves. Wow, that was weird. Why is that? Cancel. Oh. Probability. We cut up. I forgot to check something. Does this work? That works. Okay. I need to tell it to recalculate after each iteration. Otherwise, it uses the previous values and it starts off in the wrong place. Now, if we go back and look at the population, and we if, if I run this and you look at it, it's general. Why is it? Hmm. All right. The pop, it's doing a display based upon the time series. If we change it to an agent map, and if we look at this and notice that it's actually generating a custom function of positioning, if we now run this, and plot the population. Notice that it now shows me this distributed set of people all over the place. And if I do the simulation, notice that the the population is changing from from healthy to infected to recovered. And if I slow it down a little bit, you can see it a bit better. So hopefully you get begin to see how it is that an agent-based model allows you to see different aspects of what's going on than you would in a typical SD model. Now, what I would encourage you to do is go to your first ABM, the element in here, and these two videos will be stuck in here, as well as a link to the disease dynamics tutorial. And what this tutorial is, is this sequence that walks through what I just did in the video, step by step by step, and, I'll, and will guide you through the creation of your first agent-based model and, and run it. And I encourage you to walk through it 
and walk through it and be sure that you have a sense of of what it is that you go through to create it and in the next segment we'll begin to delve in a bit more detail into what the individual pieces and the various options are associated with those pieces so I'll see you in the next element relatively soon.